touch yeah, her gold hands. This is a very natural hands. way to sit for a podcast, isn't it? <laughs> the video doesn't affect the way that we <laughs> sit for this podcast right. at all. It's great. For those of you who are just listening and not watching this video, we're on top of each other. That's how we get to know people really quickly. <laughs> very cozy in yeah. an archive closet. Uh huh. say this on the record and then i can decide if i'm going to take it out there are two reasons why you're on soul sisters i can't wait for this confession I, this is so i saw you play at housing works during pride when i, I was tagging along with tegan and sarah and they surprised everyone at that event and that was awesome you were playing music they like wanted to make sure that they got there in time to see you play and i was like oh that's, that's yeah. amazing yeah do you know that did not know that yeah, Felt Housing it, Works though. like sent them the schedule yeah. and they were like, you can come whenever you want. And they were like, oh, like, you know, we want to make sure we see Julia set. I love your face right and now. And then I was like, Julia, what is that? That's cool. Um, and then you were amazing. And I, they're so good at like calling out other mm-hmm. artists and mm-hmm. pulling people up and like supporting everybody. So mm-hmm. anyway, that was awesome. The other reason. Oh, why yeah. Tegan you're like grabbed my, my arm. Did she? And, and, and I was going to ask if you talked to them. Yeah, yeah. And we can talk about it later if you want. No. Um, well, yeah. go for it now. Tell the story. What happened? So, um, so what happened was, I pl- this is actually really funny. So I didn't know they were there at all. Like right. I, I wasn't warned by uh, Kristen Russo, who's incredible, who uh-huh. organized the entire thing with Gabby Rivera, and everyone is gay. So yeah. I'm playing. I'm like mid talking about my next song, and I look out and I see either <laughs> Tegan or Sarah. Yeah. But I didn't see the other one of them. <laughs> <laughs> and so, because Housing Works has those beautiful pillars. Yeah. So I've told this story a couple times at shows um, because they're, like, amazing in so many ways. And so I saw, pretty sure, T- I saw Tegan. Uh-huh. And I was like, oh, my God. I'm, like, talking. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm, like, but in my head, internal model, I'm, like, telling this story about my next song, Take It All Back, I think. Yeah. But in my head, I'm, like, holy shit, holy shit, holy <laughs> shit, that's Tegan. That's Tegan. Where's Sarah? You know. <laughs> And then I realized <laughs> so it the was. Whole time the... you're just like, where's Sarah? Where's yeah. Sarah? Yeah, where's She's got to be where's trying. Sarah? Always Don't together. forget the lyrics. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, anyway. And but I'm kind of just like straight ahead. And she seemed yeah. really interested in the story I was telling. And then I played my song, and um, she was like really engaged, and it was really beautiful. And then uh, I got off stage, and I didn't want to bother them, obviously. And then um, she grabbed my arm right before they went up to talk about the Tegan and Sarah Foundation, uh-huh. and was like, "You were really, really great. You were really, really." Great. And I was like, uh huh. <laughs> we like, I was like, thank- <laughs> yeah. And I was just like, thank you so much. And Aww. so it was a it was an amazing moment. And I'm so glad that you were there to catch it. It was both an you? awesome event. I was no, I was. They um they agreed to let us follow them around with a photographer to do like a photo diary of the day. Oh, I saw the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. It was so beautiful. my friend Jenny Regan shot them, and I was like, I'm gonna come along and just like write the captions because I want to be part of that too. So awesome. Yeah. Okay. Second, second reason. reason. God, now I don't even want to tell it. So, <laughs> were we set up on a date once? No, JK. but you're friends <laughs> with somebody who's a good friend of someone that I was dating, and so this whole thing was set up so that we could all hang out together afterwards. Like we were all gonna go out, but then she what? and I broke up. So now we're oh not all gonna go. Out. Oh my god! Oh my yeah, god! Like, like, so, like we're okay. not gonna go out after this actual thing right now. Right. Oh, I'm so, so well. I mean, we, is yeah. this, this well, is, we this could is, still go out anyway. But like I told you, now I, I like schedule myself a physical in the morning, so I'm not supposed to eat or drink, <laughs> which is like the the lame real reason why we're not going to go out tonight. But yeah, that was the can, other thing. Can we talk about? Do I? Do you want to tell me more? I'm a little yeah, confused. Guess, <laughs> yeah. Emily said to me, she was like, "Oh, Sue was telling me that you should book Julie Walden, who's a friend of hers, da, 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 on Soul Sisters." And I was like, "Oh, I was going to anyway. Actually, thanks for reminding oh, me." Oh, that's so and she was cool. Like, what? And that's I was like, so no, I actually saw her play at Pride, and like, I wanted to. So yeah, totally. That's and I was happen. awesome. Man. Anyway, and yeah. you are here. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you made it. And here we are. Here we that's are. all that matters. Now, the now and the here and the present. Exactly. And, yeah. It was all meant to be. Welcome to Soul Sisters. <laughs> <laughs> Dara, what do you want to confess? <laughs> okay, you can think about it. Yeah, Confessions of a that. rock star. Confessions yeah. of a podcast host. Yeah. That'll be your autobiography when you're ready. <laughs> okay. We, we, where's the whiskey? It's an evening podcast. It's true. Fuck, we, we fucked we, up. We messed up. We forgot the booze. 100%. Yeah. Takes a couple yeah. for me. Pause. We'll go get it. <laughs> um, anyway, so here you are. Here I am. You have a new album that's out. 
And it's gorgeous. Thank and you. And that's nice Thank for you. us to oh, be yeah. able to bask in I, the afterglow of that with you. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's out. It's out in the world. It feels so good to have birthed a creative baby finally. You did. <clears throat> and it was actually a really quick turnaround comparatively to the last one, but it does feel very was good. Was it? Yes. It was a totally different process, and I feel very fortunate for that. Like Why I, was it so quick? Tell us about it. I'm going to tell you about it. Um, so, <laughs> <clears throat> so um, I... Uh, I basically did it in the polar opposite way that I did the, the light as a ghost, which I have that I have T-shirts for you guys. I have, <gasps> yeah, I have some swag. Some so much some better than like JW a CD. Swag. It is. Yeah. Uh, well, I have that too. Yeah. But <laughs> well, not to not to knock <laughs> on it, but like a, a, t- a T-shirt's awesome. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, totally. I'm glad that you appreciate them because I just made them, and people are either I love that people are honest. They're either like I lo- like I'm a T-shirt person, or like. I just have too many t-shirts. Kind of that person. That's no, like, I, have, too many I have just started ordering a bunch of new heavy cardigans to wear this winter because I realize so I need- have so mm. many good t-shirts now mm. and I don't nice. want to stop wearing them just because it's going to get cold. Allegedly, it's going to get cold and we're going to have winter supposedly at some point. Yeah, I'm not so, going to. This is insane. Yeah, like, really I'm actually hot. starting to get so annoyed that I can't wear my fall clothes. Exactly. I'm, I'm like ready. Bo- I'm doing it even though I'm hot right now. I'm just yeah. like, fuck it. I'm wearing a layer. Same. I just <laughs> sweat all the way to work. You are too. You're, yeah. You're, I, I'm a layer girl for sure. And I'm just loving this whole <laughs> thing. And I feel like, thing you're doing right now. Okay. <laughs> I just feel really sad for anyone who's not watching this because I just feel like I'm like in the middle of this great <laughs> thing. But it, since we might be editing this podcast more than others, let's just say this. I have a question. Where are you buying these cardigans? Like, where are you finding them? Because I love cardigans <laughs> and layers. So I'm not editing anything. I'm just okay. Great. Right now. Even better. Um, You've been punk. This is a podcast uh, yeah. about you, Jessica. <laughs> Finding. I'm the sister today. Okay. Um, I just ordered one from RVCA this morning. Um, it's like a, a chunky cable knit cardigan. Nice. Yeah. And I'm really excited about it. Okay. Uh, I inherited another one from my grandfather. Oh, the best. So, sorry, you can't have that. Okay. And <laughs> my mom got me one uh, a year ago from <laughs> like Talbot's, I think. But it's very nice. Rocket girl, Talbot's. <laughs> nice. You know what? Don't make assumptions I, about brands because they'll surprise you. Like, and we're my getting Talbot's to an age cardigan, I'm, I've worn it on judge. this podcast before. I dare anyone to go back and try to figure out which one it is. It's cool. Mom, chic is chic. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Talbot's cardigans. Good yes. to know. Anyway, Julie I, love, I just I'm got excited into for it. cardigans, actually. I'm obsessed now. So, I can't go. I never go anywhere without right a layer. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> a non denim layer or denim only? Any layer. <laughs> Preferably one that can fit in my bag. Okay. Or purse. <coughs> Fair. So like <laughs> I agree with that. Especially <laughs> especially during crazy. this weird season. <laughs> but literally I bring my one sweater like everywhere. Okay. I feel like I challenge Here's you a- to confess uh, something and okay. you think that this counts. What? You challenge me to confess something that yeah. I think counts that no, is worth saying, and you think that this counts. Oh, Sorry, I have to document this. Is like <laughs> okay. Here's one other little Just confession. Little Recently, I went to a concert uh-huh. by myself. Yeah, and I wanted to Which have concert? a good view. It was Maggie Rogers. Okay, Ooh, and I wanted Maggie to have Rogers. a good view, and it was amazing. But I confess that I brought wedges, like high, higher heels, to change into, <laughs> like an <laughs> asshole. So, so that, that you by could the see better, yeah. or yeah, oh. so that I changed into. I'm in the middle of a crowd, a crowded, nice. crowd. and you're like, I got my. And heels. I'm like, I can't see. I'm like, oh, the show's about to start, and I'm like, blocked by all these people. And I'm like, ding ding, I brought shoes to. Change I think into. that's brilliant. That's yeah. kind of fucked up. Really good like, advice. Why I'm is like, that fucked up? Because like, it would be. Are, I would be annoyed with you if you had said I brought them so I could like look cute when I was watching the <laughs> show. I was about me. to like chew you out for that. I feel like such a like a dyke right now because I do the same thing except I like. I have like dorky sneakers that I bring and then yeah, I'm like then so I can walk sneakers. and then like my fly sneakers that, and or my Clarks that are like not as more as yeah, comfortable yeah. and like I feel so guilty when I'm like oh my feet <laughs> hurt and like some other woman looks at me and she's just like what, what the is, fuck what? those look so comfortable what? um wow it's <clears throat> all about perspective here yeah especially so in this city though so hard on the knees and the ankles it's bad why why are we talking about this again you brought a <laughs> t-shirt because you have a new oh, album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> totally. But yeah, I'm excited that I can. Um, so you listened to Comatose Hope. Did yes. you listen to Light as a Ghost? Yes. Or? yes. Cool. Um, so Light as a Ghost I recorded in like, well, between like 2000, 
2011 and 2013 and it took like two years more like three total like put it out and the way I did this one, um, Tegan and Sarah's dr- old drummer actually drummed on that whole thing. Whoa. Yeah. On uh, awesome. Comatose Hope? On Light as a Ghost, okay. the older one. Um, oh. uh, Adam Crisco. Okay. Yeah. He, so you've already mm-hmm. been anointed by the Tegan and Sarah. Yes. World. I feel very, like, lucky. Um, yeah. I feel like, and yeah, there's, like, a touch of them, like, their sound on that album, and it's very, yeah. like, indie folk pop, but, yeah. like, a little more indie pop than this, I think, in some ways. Like, it's more kind of a <clears throat> the producer I worked with on that one is is he's very linked in with like Dan Romer and um and Ingrid Michaelson. Yeah, mm-hmm. I felt that vibe. <clears throat> totally. Sure. And so as much as I think it's like really beautiful because I love that album. Like it's such a great thing that I put out and it was really necessary. Like I was dragging my feet for a long time to put it put out my songs cuz I'm I don't know. I it's I've gotten more and more productive about like churning out the music that I write uh-huh. like and but I'm very I'm like kind of a perfectionist so I think sometimes it takes me a long time to to like make moves to make it I want it to sound perfect so yeah I'm not just gonna like record an EP in my room is what I'm saying you know what okay. I mean so Respect. I like went across to Bristol England to like record this second one even though I had just like survived a life-threatening coma. Right, okay. <laughs> yeah, I know. There's a lot <laughs> There's going so much. in. Sorry. Can we take it back totally. to like where were you in the making of the first album like in your mm-hmm. life in the three or so oh, years before good that? Question. Yeah, so I was in a really tumultuous, insane relationship period and I was actually like kind of leaving one relationship where I had kind of written a lot of those songs, which is interesting because I don't think of it as a productive relationship because it was destructive mm. and kind of bad mm-hmm. and then but when, good for the old art but good but good for the art I'm like oh shit I wrote half the album in that apartment you know what I mean yeah um were you um, what were you doing she doesn't hear this. Uh, like professionally or musically what was your background like, what were you doing with your life um oh funny story yeah so I was so I actually grew up as a child actor did you guys know that no yeah, yeah. you did uh, yeah it's out there on the internet. What? Yeah, I, I, it. I thought that was your confession. No. So that was oh. actually kind of a nice, you threw me for a loop. Because usually people are like, to me. I, I, am, I am a Meryl Streep fanatic, and so I would like to hear about that. Yeah. What? It's mm-hmm. a whole other. Can we I, just do that quickly? What is that story? Yeah, so I grew up, um, yeah, let's try to do it. It's like a. Okay, guys, I'm going to keep it linear here. <laughs> yeah, right? All yeah. right, we're not editing anything. All right, child really acting, well let's life start there. Story. <laughs> okay. Um, child acting. Yeah. So sorry, I'm like the least linear, so you can totally be like, rein it in, rein it in. Too bad there's a video because there's no one steering the ship. It's fine. Great. It's okay. So um, I I grew up child acting. Like I literally fell into the industry. I mean, I could tell lots of stories, but to keep it simple, I I grew up professionally acting, and I did like, I actually fell into it and ended up in an uh, indie film, like my fourth audition, and. Um, yeah, I grew up, so I was born in Brooklyn, raised outside the city in Jersey, but like a half hour outside. You know, I'm just literally like staring deep into your face now, like I want to recognize you before you reveal. Yeah. <laughs> I, know. I, I yeah, pride totally. myself on that. Kind yeah. Of well, there is a very popular show that I was on that you, a lot of people are like, why do you look so familiar? And then I'm like, do you like Law and Order? Um, dun dun. Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> so cheesy. It was a terrible dad joke. Dang. Were you was not it Law and Order? order? I yes, I, you were on okay. I was a lot in Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. So some pe- sometimes people like say you look familiar. Okay. And I'm like, well, maybe I just have one of those faces, but maybe you you love Law and Order. Yeah. Um. Oh, so doesn't? yeah. Right? Do you have a recurring role? No, not even. I just had one ro- role when I was like 15, and then another role when I was um like 22. Playing a totally different character, right? Yeah, on SBO. So yeah. totally different show. Law and Order. Okay. okay. <clears throat> that shit. Yeah. Law and Order. There's so many. Um, so many. So. I, but I grew up acting and, like, coming to the city all the time and thinking I was a super cool kid and, like, <laughs> wishing I lived in the city uh-huh. because I lived right outside. And, um, you know, and um, so I grew up auditioning and kind of, like, in this world. And also I did, like, an off-Broadway play when I was 17, like, very, like, a Beth Henley play. She wrote Crimes of the Heart. Cool. So acting is, like, a huge part of my performance shtick. Yeah. Um, you know, and... Um, so like, so then, oh, but the Meryl Streep thing, right. Mm-hmm. So I was 10, I got this part on the, in the indie film, and then a year later I auditioned like 10 times because they were like, who is this unknown girl? 
um, that looks kind of like Scarlett Johansson, but not more tomboyish, maybe. And but she was Scar- ScarJo was like not. We were auditioning for the same shit. Really? Yeah, me, ScarJo, Natalie Portman, like all these, oh God, all these so girls. Funny. And then I became like super queer and gender queer, and I was like, oh, maybe I'll write songs, <laughs> which is like a whole other <laughs> yeah. story. Yeah, okay. that's what we're trying to get. We'll come back to but that. But Meryl okay. Streep, yeah, she's great, and I just did a podcast about her actually. What, what did you work with her in? <clears throat> so I worked um, in this movie uh, before and after, and I auditioned many, many times. Got a callback. Did a reading with her. And she was like hugging me and, and you were acting. How old? I was eleven. Wow. So um, I auditioned for that film and and it was like a long shot, obviously, and and I got it. And it wasn't really a long shot. I mean, when you're a kid and you're unknown and you have a natural, amazing natural <laughs> abilities. No, it's just like when you're a kid, kids are so fucking amazing at acting. Like I see yeah. kids act, and I'm like, right, right, right. You're just like feeling your feelings right, exactly. and doing your fucking thing. Yeah. And I think I still like knock on wood have that. It's not something you really, I mean, you get more like rigid, but I still act now, which is, I can talk about. But so I was in this film, we filmed for like two months in the Berkshires. I was a lead role, Meryl Streep and Liam Neeson's daughter, Eddie Furlong's sister. How, we're all the same age, I think. Yeah. You, you got, yeah. Oh, I don't know. Dare we say our ages? Sure. Well, I think you said it on like one. one. We were talking about Sophie yeah. Pia. <laughs> 34. 34. Fuck yeah. 35. Fuck. Same age, <laughs> same age. I'm about to got upset. You rolled her. That's weird. Um, Sorry, but Just I got my birthday recently. So you're happy about it. I am. I'm great. <laughs> you're doing awesome. Great. And thanks. we all have baby faces left. There you go. Oh. <laughs> but so I did this film, and it was an um, incredible experience. Like Meryl Streep and Liamson's daughter, Eddie Furlong's sister. He is a weirdo. And then Alfred Molina was in it. John Hurt. Like yeah, all I these. Other... I don't know this movie. I don't think I know this movie either. <clears throat> so. I talked Why about don't this we on know the pod- this movie? I talked about this on the podcast. Yeah. <coughs> about Meryl Streep. Who has a fucking Meryl Streep podcast? It's not a terrible movie. It. Oh, um is this, this Meryl guy? Streep podcast? Yeah, no, it's a it's a it's an amazing it's an amazing podcast. <laughs> Speak of, it was it was it's great amazing. to be on it. Um so this guy, Zachary Scott Johnson, he's actually a singer songwriter. Oh. And he's based out of Minnesota and they contacted me out of nowhere. They contacted like an old manager of mine and they were like, We're wondering if Julia Walden will do this this podcast about Meryl Streep and I was like yeah like, that's so this is funny. so weird it's like such a blast from the past yeah and I had like all these intense realizations while I was talking about her about the ways that she's like shaped my acting whoa it was cool it was really cool that's awesome um I want one little one I know we can't really spend more time you wait, want one too I do why are you looking at me <laughs> like I thought you were gonna get mad at me not at all okay no, not when we talk about oh. Meryl. Okay, right. Please. Like Meryl, um, exceptions for Meryl. This is yeah. actually a Meryl Street Absolutely. podcast. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just Surprise. rewatched Florence Foster Jenkins. It's just. <laughs> what? It's sublime. It is like the you perfect movie. Oh my God. I, I thought it was like a perfect All Meryl film. Street movies for you yeah. to pull well, out I of your pocket. Right it. Yeah. It's a little it weird. A- I'm just- <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> I haven't seen it, but I was. We're judging I a little bit. It's a perfect yeah, I can't film. judge it all. It's like because- amazing. Okay, great. I- now I know I should see it. Second I- time. Yeah, I didn't see it. Oh, okay. I get all oh the- you both of you judging me. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's- and she's a singer. That's why I also say it. I mean, it's amazing. Favorite it's Meryl movie. Go. Don't say Florence Foster Jenkins. It's like Sophie's Choice, but that's heavy. Oh. I don't know. I can't really do that. I thought you were saying. It's Sophie's choice to make this <laughs> choice. <laughs> it's literally Sophie's that would choice. Be way too smart for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Sophie's choice. Don't and do that to me. I don't know. You have to give me options. What are they? Um, Death becomes her. I'm fuck yeah. Yes. Favorite? Becomes, no, but it's just a favorite film. Okay. Oh god. Yeah. I feel like I'm missing one that I love. Now a like- warning. What? What? It's Death becomes her. Guys, come on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't even know. I saw it, like when deep. I was auditioning for the film. Um, Mine is Postcards from the Edge. Oh, fuck. That's a good one. Anyway. Okay. What What is one big that's takeaway not me from working that's me with like, Meryl Streep? I'm just talking. I'm talking a lot. Um, what is what? One big takeaway from working with Meryl Streep. Oh, it was incredible. Um, she was just um, so good at like preparing herself for a shot um, for, mm. for, for shooting. Mm-hmm. But what I realized, fr- there was this huge realization that I had that when I was a child, maybe the reason that I was so affected by her, because they were asking like what they were asking for anecdotes. And I was talking about how I think I learned just from watching her and that I find myself to be very good at like impressions and like mimicking people. And because I think I grew up like a chameleon, like adapting and like soaking up people's energy. And like, I think that's why I'm a great songwriter too, because I can 
really delve in and get like intimate and like empathetic with a lot of different emotions. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think I realized while I was talking to them that I think I start, I think I watched her and mimicked her. Like, I think that I learned what, she, like wh- how she prepared and like these little things she did. And um, yeah, I think I just kind of copied her. Like I was yeah. around like this incredible actress because they were asking if I realized how big of a deal it was. And I said, no, I don't think I did. Like, I think I knew uh-huh. because my parents were like freaking out probably. Right. They were actually really down to earth about it. But I think that. At that age, you wouldn't have a full extent. No, no I, would, I didn't have a full understanding. But I think that throughout the process, I started to understand like how, um, what's the word? Like how, just how, um, how much of a genius she was. Right. Like, I think that my baby brain was like, do what that person is doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, when you watch her act, you are aware, and some people might say this is negative. I don't mean it negatively. You are aware of how many choices she's making in mm. every moment. But also know? making it seem effortless. Yeah. Effortless. Right. Yeah. And also that it comes mm-hmm. from preparation. It's not exactly. like the camera turns on and she just figures it out in the yeah. moment. She really spends time, and that's informative, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she taught me, like, the these simple little tricks. She came into my trailer. We had, like, an emotional scene where I had to cry. And I'm, like, 11. I'm, like, yeah. what am I doing? She had me, co- she came into my trailer and had me like do these little tricks. And I mean, like, it's, a, it's amazing. What a, what a memory. Yeah. 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 Okay. So when did you <laughs> phase out from acting and into music? So I, um, so I had this like kind of like successful child acting career. And then I went to Vassar and, um, <laughs> I got like, I bleached my hair in the first semester. I was just like a mess. Uh-huh. And I, uh, I like pierced my eyebrow and I was like I'm gonna go be like a normal kid and yeah. um study philosophy I was a philosophy major oh, one of those. and I just wrote so- not thinking about your career <laughs> whatsoever <laughs> not at all and I literally like was like cool 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 books I should read them and then yeah. would go back and like be like oh, write some songs about my feelings yeah. and the girls that I like <laughs> did you teach yourself guitar yeah, so this is the other thing. So it's interesting. She hand motioned guitar and while she's saying that. Yeah, just just so you guys know. <laughs> Air guitar. Air guitar. Air guitar. guitar finger <laughs> um, So I actually, um, it's interesting because my guitar playing is actually concurrent. Like I picked up the guitar when I was like 12 or 13. So I actually kind of like had both creative outlets in high school. And I was like a mess in high school. Like I was a depressed gay kid. Like yeah. I had a lot of dark, dark times and it was pre you know it's interesting because on the other podcasts that I've listened to you guys talk about the interwebs a lot and it's changed like so much yeah and um like I tried to like I fell in love with like on cyberspace and like tried to run away to Ohio like what oh, the really? fuck like in oh a chat yeah room? yeah like in, yeah. in like an audio Franco chat room no was, was it I'm just gonna whisper that <gasps> it's coming full circle soul sisters here we go That's yeah so, wow. so it was kind of wild to listen to you guys talk to her because yeah um, she's such a significant, I mean, the Ani trap room has less to do with it, but like, it's just, uh, were, were you out at that time? So I was like, I came out when I was like 13 to my parents, very, very young. And interestingly enough, had an acting role where I had to play a bisexual character. Oh. And I kind of feel like, like you were doing that when you came out. Yes. And yeah. like, I, I real no, I realized the moment that I played the character. Like, it was bonkers. And yeah. it's so funny because Ani was talking about how she's realizing that things are so... This is also really weird in full circle because she was talking on the podcast about um, how she's realizing that you don't realize something's possible uh-huh. unless you see it, unless it's visible, unless you feel it. Yeah. And I was like, this is so wild because it's so true. And mm-hmm. I feel that way about my gender queerness. Yeah. Um, I had to... Like, real- you had to see it to identify it. I had to be of? immersed in a community of people who... I saw myself in totally and like as so it's really weird to me that I might have come out like a couple years later I don't think it would have taken that long yeah, yeah. but 13 is pretty young yeah mm-hmm. back in 1990 seven seven eight yeah yeah seven so um wait but this is a really important point I want to dwell on this moment for a second yeah this course. is why representation in media fucking matters oh, and yeah. like talking about it is not just like this weird bubble thing that only matters to people in Hollywood or in music or whatever because that's exactly what happens you see somebody and you identify with them and you're like wait a minute Mm -hmm. it's not just me you know it's huge I mean I think it's so huge you don't even realize it's a possibility I literally 
I was like boy crazy from fourth to eighth grade. Yeah. And I had like feel weird feelings, like I saw Foxfire and I was like, I feel weird in my pants. Is <laughs> that the first Angelina movie? Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. But like then, you know, I didn't, I did not, I didn't feel it until I saw it. I felt it as a possibility for myself and knew yeah. it was a thing. Yeah. I was like, oh yeah, yeah, bisexual. Right. right, right, right. And my mom probably explained it to me so I could play the role. And yeah. Yeah. That was cool. John Leguizamo was in the reading for that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wow. So I've met like a lot of, I've randomly encountered a lot of famous people. It's cool. Right. With, with the acting. At least. <laughs> yeah. But were you at Vassar when Anne Hathaway was there? Yes. We were in the vagina monologues together. Were you? <laughs> I mean, like, I could tell stories for fucking days. Sorry. <laughs> That's a good one. That's really she read funny. Wanted... the My vagina is my village, pretty sure. Wow. Sorry, I said vagina like that. It's weird. It was very smooth. <laughs> my very vagina velvety. is my <laughs> <laughs> the soft consonants there. I was in the vagina monologues. I don't think I told oh, you. Oh, yeah. Who were you? I it was like one of the non like <clears throat> monologue-y. It was like kind of like an interstitial y thing. That was my really? role. Really? It was yeah. like I'm glad you consider that a role because I think I wasn't, that they I, were like I wouldn't <laughs> consider it a role. Yeah, it's I was the, I was the fact it. person. That's part of it. Yeah. I was like, I was like the that. clitoris has ten thousand times the amount of nerve endings that the whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I remember it was I was at the new school and we had to do <laughs> A representation on like a poster board representation <coughs> of our vagina. Oh wow! Of your own? Yeah, you did of it. Our own. Yeah, I did. <laughs> did it? <laughs> I don't. Well, I wonder if, it, or if it was just like what our. When pants, I just imagine what was, your comfort if, zone no, 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 is, no, no, that, that couldn't have been. That's not, it, who's is that within their comfort zone? No, it was. It was. What sure. would your panties say, or like something like oh, that? Okay. Something. Just Where did you go to school? Horrible. <laughs> Me? No, you got yeah, both of you. I went to Kenyon College. Nice. In Ohio. Yeah. Where'd you go? So that was yeah, BU and then the the new school for jazz. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, anyway, vagina monologues. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So my acting career is like super. It's been really really amazing, and but I am fully on board. Like when I heard Ani say that, uh-huh. it was so the way she described it was like that you're in your. She's like I'm realizing that if you don't see it, if you don't see it represented, if mm-hmm. you don't see it talked about, if you don't see see it as a possibility that you're stuck in a, like a negative loop where, yeah, you, where right. your, your image of yourself is never reflected. Yeah. And that like, it's so beautiful the way she described it. Um, and also, I talked about it actually at Buffalo when I played at the college there recently. I was like, did you? yeah, but um, I was going to say something else, but go ahead. Yeah. I, I, you would identify, I heard, mm-hmm. do you listen to Cameron Esposito's podcast? That's a podcast you should. I, I can't wait to listen to it. I know yeah. of her, like right. we have similar friends too, yeah. Okay, so she has this new podcast called Query, and oh, Evan nice. Rachel Wood was just on it. And Because Evan Rachel Wood played a queer character when she was very young, who like had a thing oh. with Misha Barton. When she, was she was oh, like... Oh, Lost and Delirious? Yeah. No, she was in that? Evan Rachel Wood? Yeah. Is that what, Lost and Delirious? It was a show. Oh, never mind. Oh. No, I don't know. What oh, I know. It. No, yeah, that's, not, like that's another. Misha Barton was in a lot of queer things <laughs> yeah. back in the day. I no, that's a movie been. with um Piper Perabo. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I want to say it might have even been Once and Again, that show with um Seal Award. I love that show. So Lost me. Anyway, and Evan Rachel Wood was like 13 or 14, I think, when she was playing this character. And she talks about <clears> on the podcast how she was like, and I like was having feelings for Misha I think and like totally. figuring it out as she's playing that character wow yeah yeah totally it's yeah. a big deal yeah it's anyway. but um oh so that's what I was gonna say the acting is like just to tie it all in that yeah. acting has come in and out of my life because there's not enough roles not because I don't want to be doing it mm. and I'm at this really beautiful point in my life where all of a sudden because of Laverne Cox and other trans and gender non-conforming people paving the way mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I run the gamut, like I'm very fluid. So I go from like being on a soul sisters podcast and identifying as, I mean, I don't, I know that you probably don't require me to identify as something, but it's interesting to me that like in the industry, both industries, Mm -hmm. there's a lot of boxing. Yeah. And, um, but with acting, it's starting to tip and I'm getting a lot of like, it's just like acting just weaves its way in and out of my life and I, I can't chase it. It's not the yeah. kind of thing I can choose. It. It's very fortuitous. It's very serendipitous. Like from 11 to right now, like mm-hmm. it's I'm starting to get a lot of great auditions and great part offers. And I'm like, fuck, yeah, great. And I have an for agent gender, who gets yeah, like, characters or yeah, for um, queer, gender, queer uh, characters. And, um, you know, I've played a couple of really amazing trans characters um, 
but like young boys uh-huh. like I can't pass for like because I'm not I'm not taking hormones and I'm I'm but I had top surgery so uh-huh. it's like but it's just just to like let you guys know it's interesting because I like I've gone through phases like when I graduated from college I wasn't trying to act at all and yeah. I out of nowhere got cast in SVU uh-huh. so I was like oh I, uh, I it, should be acting yeah. like literally like months before my senior year ended so I was what like was the character like was it like a femi- like a yeah girly, it was like a like a I had like one of my ex girlfriends dress me up. We put like a fucking bow in my hair, and I went to the audition. I got it like that. They were like produce. It was a callback. Like they had seen before and after. I think the oh, yeah, the, yeah. the night before. Did it feel okay to do it? Or I played like a girl that was sexually assaulted by her best friend who was in a roid rage. Wow. And um, it did it feel okay to play that? Yeah, like that type. So that's a really great question. So I actually ended up graduating from Vassar and being like, oh, great. I just made a lot of money on TV. And, like, I'm great at acting. Yeah. I should be doing this. <laughs> Mariska Hardigay is amazing and very tall. And very so tall. then I, like, graduate and I'm like, great. Philosophy, never mind. Uh, songwriting. Philosophy, never mind. Never mind. <laughs> what were you going to do yeah. with that? Because that was, don't yeah, ask. That's yeah, like, yeah, a, yeah. like, not interesting. <laughs> You're like, continue to smoke weed and talk about yeah. Socrates, obviously. <laughs> totally. Someone was going to pay me for that eventually. I kept seeing things for, like ads on the subway when I moved for philosophical counseling. Yeah, yeah. That was, that was uh, my plan. I mean, I don't know why I'm talking shit. I was an English major. Right, but same. It's just funny. I know. Yeah. <laughs> but then. I identify. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah totally. We yeah. all like. I was a Spanish lit major. Right. Come on. <laughs> I, I feel really bad when I talk to college kids. I'm like. What's your major? And then I'm like, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, I know. Like, you're going to do Aww. something beautiful. You're going to make some Nothing to do with that. <laughs> Nothing to do. It's like, maybe you'll draw on it, like, twice. But, like, it's fine. But enjoy um, your debt. <laughs> yeah. Good luck with that. I'm yeah. just kidding. Um, but then. So you're like, I'm great at acting. I'm, yeah, I'm like, I'm great at acting. Oh, this is amazing. I'm just going to do this. And then it was horrible. Like, that's what I'm talking about. So the industry had, like, changed a lot. And this is now like circa like 2006 Mm -hmm. and it was so painful and I misgendered myself like I was I grew my hair out because I went Mm -hmm. back to my old agent and they were like my agent was like great you got a part part on on TV you're a great actor like of course we'll represent you again grow your hair out so I grow my hair out I wear like it was painful like I wore skirts to auditions and you know I think that I don't know what and then I got a couple really big parts I actually played not like big parts, but I got a, a good part um, in, I got a really good part playing a queer character and gender queer and cool, cool little story. Silas Howard is a director, a really amazing director on Transparent. Oh. And he's a really good friend of mine, but yeah. only because he cast me. I auditioned for a film and it never got made, but he thought of me for another role. And this is how it happens in the queer world. Like, so anyway, I played a young him in a Wait, short film with black he hair. cast you on what? A short film, Not tr- a really okay. cool. <laughs> I just had to be we clear. were like, oh, and Transparent, Transparent is our obsessed with favorite show. Yeah. It's fucking incredible. Oh yeah, you guys were talking about it on another podcast. Yeah, we did. Yeah. By the way, I finished it yesterday. You did? So. Oh, I, I, have to, so I have to watch so the whole good. thing. I watched. I binge watched season three. I have to. It's good. Yeah, yeah. I can't wait. Can't wait. It's interesting that we're talking about um, sort of seeing things in order to sort of get into that and know that they're a thing and the same thing is true with language i mean now mm. we have gender mm. queer f- gender fluid i don't think those were things that mm. were, we would talk about in 2006 and so that mm. probably made it hard for you to say well I-, I might identify this way but there's not this in between ground that i feel like there is yeah. now and it's so common yeah yeah right yeah it's so i'm almost yeah, afraid to get so started common. on that but yeah well, it's <clears throat> because People are still resistant to it. They're like, whatever, we're, uh, it's too much, I can't keep up, it's politically correct. It's, it's like, no, but it has so much power to be able to name a thing and to be able to identify with other human beings because they also say the thing, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's almost the antithesis of boxing. I right, feel like exactly. these words are. Yeah. Yeah. And so yeah. it probably has helped be, like, be yeah. able to be confident. Okay, so really good story related to that. Yeah. So, um, or yeah no and I mean I think I completely agree but so what's cool is that I think I don't think it's ever I don't think it's enough like it's not enough yet right but I do think that there are people out there in the industry and and acting and you know music is a little different which we can talk about but um I still encounter stuff you know and Mm -hmm. I think it's a problem um Mm -hmm. and um so but with regards to acting this is really cool I just got a tiny little part on the second season of uh, High Maintenance. Dope. Yeah, it's one of my favorite shows. Yeah. Because 
they are like blind casting and Mm -hmm. they're not just blind casting they're like as someone who sees the breakdowns it's the breakdown is like what you see when you're like uh, trying to submit for a part Mm -hmm. um this the role that i submitted for said literally they were looking for like a queer couple and they said in the description cis or trans i mean so wow. and then I ended up getting cast and I don't identify I wouldn't necessarily pass as like a trans man, uh-huh. but I do present as like ambiguous. Uh-huh. I was just at the SAG offices and it's funny I'm here because I was just at the SAG offices and I kept there were all these old people running this event uh-huh. and they were like, uh, are you sure? Oh, hi. And then they like <laughs> noticed I was like not a man, but this is a, like a masculine outfit. And I kept like, I was like, fuck, I'm going to Soul Sisters and I look like a fucking boy. Because <laughs> like this is like, I kept getting mistaken by these old people as a, as a boy. And I was like, they were like, son, you can just go right in there. And I was like, thanks. Um, so funny. Which was fine. But so I just got <laughs> cast in high maintenance and they're doing incredible things like to cast they spe- specified this can be a gender non-conforming person this can be non-binary person and it's like it's for someone who's been in the industry since i felt so uncomfortable like 10 years ago mm-hmm. and a what decade a ago and literally gave up like i gave up i was like i i think i was in denial and i dated people who were like why are you doing this why aren't you working on music and that's kind of what happened I kind of gave up because I was like, I can't. And sometimes you need to do that. Like you need to be like, this is painful. And being misgendered is like incredibly painful. So, and it's good to like admit that and be like, I don't, I can't wear a skirt. Like I can wear a skirt as like someone who's in drag, but I can't really play, play certain roles and that's okay. Right. You know? Yeah. So, so yeah, I'm just like, sorry. so, so there's lot. so many things that yeah. I want to, but I guess this takes us to the point of when you were writing Light as a Ghost is when you're feeling these feelings of not being able to be in, in that industry because of your changing attitudes about this stuff and feelings. Yeah. So what happened was I, I actually did have a, a small group of really supportive people that like, and TBH, like a lot of ex-girlfriends were like. I mean, not a lot. I didn't have like a harem of ex-girlfriends, but like a lot of people I dated questioned my career choice. They were like, look, like you write beautiful music and you've been doing it. Like I've self-taught from the age of like 12 and then started writing songs when I was 15. And um, I feel very blessed, as Tori would say, by the muses. (laughs) Um, uh, Not as blessed as as she is. (laughs) Yet. But yet, yeah, yeah right. Yeah. I can yeah. cultivate some muses, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. Some of the muses. Um, so um, I started, yeah, so like my mid 20s is when I, I started to be like, fuck, I'm going to give this a shot. And mm-hmm. I started playing live. And because I'm a fucking narcissistic artist, I was like, this feels really good. You know, <laughs> I mean, I had been playing live since I was in high school. Yeah. But like in college, I'd play for like the silly little coffee shop. Like, right. Like I was in the singer songwriter club. Yeah. Yeah. Um, were you still living in New York? Like when you graduated college? Did yeah. You so I moved right back to Brooklyn. Back. Okay. And then um, I lived in like Bushwick, Greenpoint, mm. all over. And now I'm in bed All the cool places. All the cool places <laughs> right. until I got priced out of each and uh-huh. every one of them. <laughs> yep. But um, so then I started kind of trying to pursue it. I had a manager for a while. He was a sweet dude. He ended up kind of booking me um, more than managed. He managed and booked me. And he gave me my start playing it like, you know, some like, like Mercury Lounge, Knitting Factory, stuff like that. Did you have a regular band? with you i had i went through like many different permutations of bands another issue that i have like a, a, i started writing like alone when i was like 15 and i'm kind of like a solitary it's kind of i kind of have like a melissa Farrick vibe like i could just play solo forever yeah and so it's hard because i think it's really hard to find the right people when you're self-sufficient for so long so um and also, New York's it's a hard scene. People are so busy. You like, know? do you write yeah. on the computer? Do you do you like Pro Tools and just like make your own beats and things too? Like, oh, you no, could no, just no. play by yourself? No, no. Okay. I just compose on guitar and now piano and uke, yep. which is cool. So Luke. when you play live, you need uke. Luke. I just found out it's actually ukulele, and I felt so dumb. What? <laughs> you guys both just like. Well, even if that's true, yeah. I mean, Don't okay, I believe you. It's true, but you would sound like such an asshole. Exactly. If you said I'm just gonna play this sound next like one on the ukulele. Sound like a parody in like Portlandia or something. Right. <laughs> it's actually I've been watching a lot that of that. Should that's be true. right. <laughs> um, okay. So I I compose on guitar and 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 ukulele and now keys, which is a really fun addition because I write like totally different songs. But yeah. I basically finally got to cobble together like I played Saul like Saul Simon McWilliams is the producer of Light is a Ghost I played 
all of my songs and he, you know, I had like probably 20 songs. That I was like, well, we could do these. And then he picked the best 12. And and did he basically assemble like. He literally said, um, no, well, for the for recording, we actually just he, we brought in Adam Criscow for drums. Mm-hmm. We went up to a cabin for a week and awesome. he came in and just banged out like 10 tracks in two days. And then we had amazing guest artists just come into the studio and, and record and um, actually a really amazing guitarist, Billy Libby, was living with him at the time and um, a viola player. So we had we all kind of like spent the year. I was a hot mess like during the recording process. Oh, I was why? going through a breakup uh, with this person uh-huh. and then starting the most like fire, fiery relationship of my life that lasted a year and then burnt out. Ooh. But it was like so I, on the heels of like my most vulnerable. I was yeah. recording the album all year, like every weekend. Like so not in a good place. Yeah. And um I mean, you know. And um can I block the camera for certain things? <laughs> Danielle just pulled a sheet there. in front of it. <laughs> just talking about my vices, everybody. Um they all got them. Yeah, right. It's good to share them. Yeah, that's why I write songs. Exactly. Uh so like I I was really emotional and then um and I think it's why it's such a it's a good, it's a very emotional album, and interestingly enough, I think that Saul is, like, a genius, but mm-hmm. he, like, popified the shit out of it. Like, mm-hmm. I played him Meadow, the first song on my on that album, and he yeah. said, I'm going to Tegan and Sarah the fuck out of that. <laughs> and, and were you like, fuck yeah. Yeah, I, okay. I literally yeah. was like, ah, I'm so excited. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. You can do whatever you want. But yeah. he's a genius, and he works with amazing people, and it's, it's more polished. And so I think it's very emotional, but I, what I want to do with, the next album was something a little more sophisticated, a little more. The I wanted the sound to be a little less like the pop formula and more emotional, and right? Grounded. So tell us this crazy story about the new album. So, um, so yeah, my my next album is. Uh, I mean, my current album is called Comatose Hope, and I'm very very excited about it. And um, I, <laughs> I had so I did have. So fiery, fiery relationship. Yeah. So I had some of the songs before I had this crazy experience. I had, okay. I had like, um, and I was gonna go out to LA and record again with Saul, and I think that would have been amazing. But I'm, I, I had like enough material for an EP maybe, or to do like soft, like breakup songs uh-huh. and pop songs. Mm. Like I was gonna do two EPs maybe. Mm. That cool. was the plan. Yeah. And then I had um, top surgery, which in the in November of 20, uh, 2015. We're in. We're almost in November of 2017. That was a 40th slip. <laughs> so literally, almost like two years ago, I had yeah. top surgery, and that was something that I was so excited about. Um, and had you been planning that for a long time? So um, interestingly enough, like we're talking about, um, like when I think, like I realized, I just was surrounded by some people that had been doing this or mm-hmm. like whatever. Mm-hmm. I mean, I had been th- that the idea of not wanting my chest had been percolating in me since yeah. college yeah so i got to college like shaved my head like you uh-huh. know you go through all like normal changes uh-huh. and um i think that it took me like a, it just took me a decade to really take the leap but i had w- been mm-hmm. wanting to do it for a very long time mm-hmm. and so excuse me i um it it's this thing that happens that my surgeon actually mentioned. She said, I find that when people realize they they it's just about making it happen. Like mm-hmm. you don't like really realize something like that and then be like I mean, it's scary. Like don't get yeah. me wrong, I was terrified and then ironically it should have been, but like um I think a lot of people are really scared and I talk to a lot of gender queer people that contact me to to talk to them about my experience mm-hmm. despite what like what happened. Yeah. Um like I get fan messages on Instagram all the time from people that want to know like how it feels to not want to take tea but to want to have the body that you need and mm-hmm. I feel so happy that I can be a visible like role model or amazing. whatever. So did you to respond what... to people? Yeah, I, I respond to every single person. That's amazing. Yeah, in in yeah. my own time, but yeah. Um, so I have surgery <laughs> like eventually. <laughs> Whenever I can get to. <laughs> I'm a rock star, and then um, and then I have the surgery and um kind of a you know you can research all you want online i have like a couple different um places that you can find out about it but the long story short is that um i mean i'll give you the long story if you want but um basically i ended up contracting like a a, either a virus i think from touring a lot like i might have just been sick 
I think I was just sick. Like like you had, you were already sick and didn't know it? Yeah, I think I had yeah. some sort of recurring infection that never went away. I mean, I literally was known as like a hypochondriac amongst my friends. And I would... I, because you kept complaining about kept something com- that was undiagnosed. Exactly. Yeah. And that happens God. a lot of times. Wow. I, I'm a hypochondriac, and that's terrifying to hear because now that's oh, going to no. <laughs> reinforce my paranoia. You have a nice uh, ruddy complexion, though. Like, oh, okay, I look back thanks. at photos, and I look sick, and it's, yeah. like, scary. I mean, I don't look terrible, but I had a lot of anxiety because of, like, to, to be honest, I think I was unhealthy. Mm-hmm. I was I was not well, and I think it went undiagnosed, and I have no idea what happened. Like, honestly, I played a lot of colleges. Like, those microphones. Colleges are dirty. Yeah. Do you know what it was? Like, did they tell you? So I I think I had, like, a bad immune problem, right? Mm -hmm. And then, or a recurring infection that they kept being like, no, 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 you're fine. Just go on these antibiotics. Mm. And um, then I had a major surgery. I also did a 23-hour stay in the hospital after my top surgery. So there's a possibility my immune system was suppressed. I got a virus. The Mm -hmm. virus was like, oh, we're not going to do anything around your chest. So I had basically a F to M top surgery so reconstruction and um my chest is beautiful now um and I love it but um the drains and everything that, uh-huh. that I mean the surgical site was fine so I think that they looked huh. they they look you know when I had my follow-up appointment and mm-hmm. when we were looking people like uh, my partner and I were like looking to see if anything was wrong nothing went wrong yeah and um and nothing everything looked totally normal so it was totally a surprise when uh i got debilitating headaches a fever flu-like symptoms and then like convulsions in the middle of the night which yeah it was a it was an oversight they should have noticed something especially this is how easy this is how crazy it was so we go to the er because my fever spiked on saturday a week later and they did a bunch of tests and they still they sent me home. And then at this point I black out. So basically what, what happened was we didn't know this, but my brain was swelling and I had a viral encephalitis. So it was basically oh diagnosed God. as like a meningeal encephalitis. And um, I was in a coma for four days. And I'm totally fine now, but <laughs> it God was um, I came out of the coma like a hilarious. I had no negative emotions. Really? really? Yeah, yeah. They were like, is that a thing that happens? Yeah, like people come out of comas and they're angry, and I was just like hilarious. The opposite. I literally was like, Mom, I'm not in a coma. Um, <laughs> but it was. Did that catch up to you eventually? Like, yeah, like I mean, sad? I had to do like, a the lot. Music of... is like, oh yeah, I almost died. Yeah. Uh, right? Yeah. Oh okay. yeah. <laughs> oh, I, like, I thought that... that that was your review. I was so I was like, that's so sweet. I thought <laughs> you were like, oh, your music. I almost died. <laughs> well, that too. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So that um, is something Dara would say. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. Yeah. But I mean, you clearly you go into it in a way that yeah. it's not just like hilarious. Oh, no, yeah. but I wonder if it's like if it's a thing All where my you, songs are spoof songs. Yeah. But like that you would come out of the coma and you just are like kind of out of it. So I was just you're out like of it, yeah. euphoric and goofy and whatever. But then I wondered if it like then swung back hard the other way. So I was like really, really fucked up and it took me like six months to recover. Um, so, like I couldn't walk. I couldn't. When I woke up, yeah, no, when I woke up from the coma for after four days, I mean, I mean also, like, my whole family thought, I, I mean, we thought I was going to die. Yeah. It's, like, kind of insane to go through that, to be, like, to, I kind of lost a year, too, like, when people are, like, when did I last see you? And I always, like, mess up the, it's interesting, it's still, it's, like, mm. a year I lost. Yeah. Wow. Even though it was only a year ago that I was, like, fully recovered, it's still, and even though I could do so many things after three months. Yeah. I was it was such an intense proce- process mm-hmm. I think to recover and I don't realize it like I think wow. I'm still recovering from the recovery you know yeah I'm sure I'm sure you have yeah PTSD yeah it's from yeah. that experience but also it's so weird to not be present for something traumatic like that it's almost more like yeah. when I first came out of it I would talk about how it must be more traumatic for my family right because I mean I You're can not. show you guys photos. After I'll send you guys photos afterwards. I mean, I had like, you know, I looked like I was dying. I had like tubes in my mouth. Mm-hmm. And on the Kickstarter video that I did for this, it was really intense. Like people were really hit by it. And the editor did such a beautiful job to show you only have like three photos, but they're like crazy. You mm-hmm. know, I'm like hooked up to all these machines. And, um, you know, I wasn't I, I just yeah, I was just very lucky. But um, I had to be on like IV drugs like two weeks out of the hospital. Um, I mean, for like three three weeks up and so I went home after a week but I mean the recovery was like insane like I couldn't do much of anything with unsupervised and um we had three doctor's appointments a week um to to recover so I'm very very lucky very very lucky and then once I got better I was just like oh man and everyone was like you're gonna write so many amazing songs and um 
It took a minute for them to come, except for Kirsten Blessed. Why? Wow. When did that come? So this is a great story. So two weeks out of the hospital, I wrote them. Wow. Like, so during this time where I'm, like, getting, like, IV drugs tw- twice a day and sleeping, like, I was sleeping, like, 18 hours a day. So yeah. my brain was still swollen. Yeah. And I'm really lucky that the pain went away because it was, like, debilitating. And, and I'm really lucky also that the brain is so meta that, like, I don't remember the pain. Yeah. Because yeah. when your brain is that mush, mushy, you know, and I'm very fortunate to be white and privileged and have health care and gay marriage and all that stuff. Um, I mean, it was just an insane experience. Um, and there's a lot of different things that lead me to like being here right now. And I feel very lucky. But so I come home from the hospital and I'm just. Wait, wait, hang on. Sorry. Yeah. Are you married? Yeah. So you guys are married. OK. I didn't yeah. realize. Um, and are you saying that because of an insurance situation through the marriage? Yeah, yeah so we got it. Okay. Yeah, um, we got married like a year into our relationship for a lot of love and a little insurance, <laughs> uh-huh. and I and then they approved my surgery, which is wow. crazy because it's not always approved, which is like a whole other thing. But That's trans amazing. healthcare, yeah. So anyway, sorry. So yeah, I so we um, so she was like there. My partner was incredible. I mean, and she had to watch me like. She had to go from being like your hypochondriac to like I didn't believe that this you were this sick and no yeah. one I mean the ER sent me home like NYU ER was like yeah just like probably a cold and then I was like oh I forgot to m- tell you the best part so like they send me home and then I just like start puking and then I have like a seizure oh well God. we go back to the ER I have a seizure so it was like really intense yeah for someone a loved one to have to watch that yeah um. And I, luckily, I don't remember anything. And then they intubated me and transferred me. And luckily, they gave me these like really strong antivirals and antibiotics. And now I'm healthier than I've ever been. Amazing. Yeah. Amen. Amazing. Yeah. Amen to that. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so I, we come home and I'm like tinkering on the guitar. And luckily, my vocal cords weren't damaged. That's another possibility that could have happened. Mm. And um, I like wrote this like really basic bitch song <laughs> basic bitch uh, I wrote this really basic song I didn't think would be anything I liked it at the time but then like listen back like a couple months later I, you know I record everything on my voice memos which Tori okay. talked to uh-huh. and um, I listened to it and I kind of didn't like it and it was really slow and my voice is really like raspy and I can barely speak and um, and then we turned it into like, Kirsten Blessed is now like this like driving war on drugs drum beat behind it and like just really like driving down the highway type open air song pop song and it's like it's kind of like the indie country it's like borders Indian country uh-huh. my I do have some band members now and we talked about how it's kind of like where like yeah it's right on the it's like walks that nice fine line there's some cool little like new 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 guitar parts uh-huh. but um so anyway, you did a kickstarter for it yeah i did a kickstarter for it yeah. awesome yeah and that went really that went really well and it was amazing like to build that community i didn't really it's really cheesy but it was really amazing to see um how much people wanted to support uh, an independent artist project and also um, I was out of work for basically a year, and my, yeah. my partner took off three months of work, um, mm-hmm. no unpaid leave, um, mm-hmm. she, you know, because FEMLA, like, she took FEMLA, but she, we didn't get paid. She didn't get paid. Yeah. And so, I mean, and I also, like, we were just eating out money, like, you know, it was like when you're going through a crisis like that, you're just like, whatever, I'll go to the bodega again, you know? <laughs> yeah. And so, um, and just millions of doctor appointments. Yeah. Um, so luckily we had insurance, but... Yeah, I'm very lucky to not have any any medical debt too. Yeah, but um, and then you found your producer to record. You like yeah. made it a, a a trip like a yeah really. F- it sounds amazing recording in London. Yeah, it was incredible. So I was actually in, we were in Bristol. I spent like one night in London, but I actually found him through Perfume Genius. Okay, and um, he's like a really amazing queer artist, and he was um, Drew Morgan was is my producer, and he was um. He was, uh, like, uh, my, like, A-list. Like, I basically yeah. was, I was like, I just recovered from a coma. Like, I almost died. I should probably do what I want with my life, right? And so just I made, go for like, it. just go for it. Yeah, and I was dragging my feet, too, because I was, uh, you know, I will be honest that after coming out of something like that, I was really turned around. I was yeah. like, how do I write an email? Like, how do I, you know, how oh the fuck God. do I do? I used to be, like, an email machine. Mm-hmm. I'd be like, because when you aren't, you know, you're trying to get yourself out there, as an independent artist, like, you know, you really have to work your ass off. And yeah. so 
it was a lot of just kind of promoting yourself and getting shows and keeping the momentum. Uh-huh. So I had like lost all momentum and then I was like, fuck, I'm gonna rec- I'm gonna go record. And then I, I contacted him. We emailed for months. We wrote like love letters, like like weird music love letters to each other about like what we could do, what we wanted to do. He was like surprised I chose him because my last album was so poppy. Uh-huh. And he's really into like experimental, like risky stuff, yeah, and uh, and ethereal, like ambient stuff. Right. And I was like, no, 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 that, yeah. that's what I want. <laughs> yeah. And it's... it was amazing to like talk to him and communicate before I went over there. And then I was just like, fuck, I'm gonna I'm gonna make this happen. And then I I I went over there. I did the Kickstarter afterwards, actually, and paid for everything like on the back end. Like, you know, put it all on credit. I was going to say, <laughs> paid off your credit card? Yeah. yeah to- I just paid it off yesterday. Nice. Yeah. Congrats. Yeah, I just used the last of the Kickstarter. Money. Oh, that's awesome. Um, and so I went over there, and interestingly enough, like, I had just actually seen the documentary on Amy Winehouse, Amy, mm-hmm. and was really, really moved by, she's, I mean, it's so sad that we lost her. Um, she's, like, so incredible. And she actually wrote a lot of her songs right before she was recording. And I ended up doing hmm. that. Like, I really? wrote a lot of the Coma songs and finished a lot of the Coma songs. Yeah. Like, Til- while you were there? No, right like right before I went. Okay. And while I was there, kind of. But Till the Crying Fades, Comatose Hope, uh, Cursed and Blessed, Failed to Find, kind of all popped out of me, mm-hmm. like, within a couple months or, like, days of leaving. And then I went over there, and they're, they're my favorite songs on the album, I think, some of them. And so, it's hard to choose. But. Yeah. So it's part of this new renewed spirit like letting go of some of that perfectionism and need to be so precious about things Mm -hmm. so you're just like i don't need to work on this forever you know like this Mm. comes out of me it sounds cool yeah totally or maybe not i don't know actually also well i think that yeah i mean that's a really good point i think that certain songs it was interesting i'm usually I'm like a perfectionist so if it doesn't pop out immediately i'm actually really hard on myself like if i don't if i don't write the whole song within one sitting like I'm very very lucky sometimes I sit down and comatose hope came out immediately like mm. within you know minutes um soon too came out in minutes like take me to the water you know everybody says definitely that was, that was like I was like I'm so heartbroken just and so a lot of I'm very used to that and I think in my older age like it <laughs> sounds so dumb but like my process is changing yeah and I was he, one someone on the on I listened to another one of your your things and someone was talking about how their process is changing and then it's it's upsetting to not be as prolific yeah but at the same time like it's a beautiful thing because like my process is changing and I have to work a little harder so like fail to find I wrote the verses all in different places mm-hmm. and kind of about different things mm-hmm. and I think that there's like a lot of I'm learning a lot about how important it is to be like, yeah, that wasn't a perfect song, but I need to like go back and edit it and make it good to record it. Or I don't have to give up on it right away. Um, I mean, me and Drew are like the producer I worked with are kind of still perfectionists, but he's, but he leaves so much within that structure of making the song sound baller and Uh well-produced. There's a lot of like beautiful, um, scratchy textures. Uh That's what I'm talking about with like, or well, just, that's different than imperfect. I mean, that's part, yeah, that's totally. the, that's what yeah. you're going for. Exactly. You know? yeah. 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 Well, I mean, maybe you made it quickly because it, you were in your groove and it just happened. <laughs> well, also, I was like, I'm in Bristol. I should probably make this happen. <laughs> <laughs> you can't stay here forever. Yeah, I was in my groove, though, and I was like, also, I just had this crazy experience. I was like, I'm going to go do this. And, yeah. And rec- only having two weeks was actually incredible to, yeah. to, 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 that was what I was saying. That, like, Let It Go took, like, three years. Mm-hmm from start to finish and this took literally a year less yeah. than a year which is like it's great crazy yeah congrats I have it yeah, yeah. Yes. thank you so much I'm so excited and about the it. video for Till the Crying Fades which is about the pole shooting yeah. is beautiful yeah and thank you so much thank you for making that how did that happen who's that director that you worked with oh my god I'm in love with her she's a very close friend now and yeah. we met randomly right after I recorded actually at a wedding in Cancun oh where I played, okay. I was playing for one of my best friends, and um, air guitar, <laughs> and um, we met and on the beach, right, literally days after Trump was elected, and we were all really oh fucked back up in the up. days when that's all you ever talked about with anyone that you met, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah literally, it's like it was, the first question to anybody, yeah, yeah. Right. no one now could it's be, like, are don't you okay? even utter it, no, are you okay, no, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
I think there's all like a, there's like a common understanding now. Yeah. Whereas don't, back don't then it was say. like, <sighs> yeah, there's a lot of hugging, commiserating, long hugging of strangers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, so you guys I bonded over Trump. Hug. So we bonded over, we all kind of, it was a gay wedding. We all kind of just like yeah. freaked out and we're like, oh my God, this is, what are we going to go, what are we going to do? Mm-hmm. And, and, um, but it was also like this actually kind of related to the song. It, it was kind of a celebratory, beautiful moment because we were all like, like, this is going to sound weird, but no one hooked up. We all became best friends. Yeah. <laughs> like we were all, you know, wedding. it was like a crazy wedding. It was like beautiful. We all were like, we need to like, we just all celebrated being yeah being different and like being anti-Trump and like well no we just the second he that. became president a lot of things automatically became an act of resistance yes exactly you know yeah. in this awesome way yeah, yeah. So. so it was kind of interesting because that's kind of what the video became it yeah. became so I sent so we met her name's her this amazing director her name is Alessandra La Carosa and she's a Colombian director mm-hmm. and um she um, is incredible and we basically met for coffee in January um, after the wedding which was like in November and I, I, I sent her a copy of the mixes before they were done mm-hmm. and she unequivocally like chose till the crying fades and then we just basically worked on producing it until like May like worked like just me and her and this amazing producer um, Justine um, we all worked I'll, like emailed like every other day and we we cast um some really great people from the community that um that some of some of whom we whom, most of whom we know yeah I think we all kind of like it was kind of a community casted project mm-hmm. but we wanted to do a um something that yeah just paid um respect to the people that were lost in pulse because I wrote this about a couple different things till the crying fades, but she obviously connected to, to wanted to make it m- mostly about that. And it was like, I literally wrote it based on an experience I had being on a pride float the year that the year that pulse happened. So right. it was like, so it was like two, right after it was like a week after. Yeah. And I had, I was on a, I was on a memorial float actually for a friend of mine who was like oh. a big member of the community as well. And so it's like all this like death stuff. Right. Yeah. And this is, um, it was post coma. So I had yeah. almost died. So like I had almost died. My yeah. friend had passed away unrelatedly. And then she, but not unrelated. She was like this force of like joy in the community. She was a party promoter. So we're on this memorial float. And I remember like being super hungover or just like feeling the feelings the next day. And I wrote, I wrote, this just like popped out of me. I was just like, this is such an, such a specific feeling to the community where we don't like we party and we dance and we we celebrate queer bodies and queer positivity and mm-hmm. body positivity and so in the video it's just like this sad but cel- celebratory energy totally yeah and i hope it it spoke to people yeah no i think it did it people are sharing it and awesome. yeah yeah it's cool Amazing. yeah so what's next oh man so don't you know, rest on your laurels over here. Yeah, right? <laughs> Meryl Streep. Can't use that for yeah, car forever. Exactly. I didn't even try to use it with you guys. It's true. <laughs> Two other things brought me here. Right? <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, no. Um, I just, I'm actually doing a lot of acting right now, as I mentioned. But the music is, I'm so glad that this is out. I'm so glad that I've turned this crazy experience into something beautiful and I think what I hope people get out of this is not just, I mean, it's about overcoming that breakup. It's about overcoming that person in your life passing away. It's overcoming like queer struggle, whatever, or just any struggle. And I think that I'm so happy that people are relating to the songs, even though it's so specific to my experience. You know, it's called comatose hope. Like that's, but you know, you listen to it and then. Yeah. That word could mean any right metaphorical yeah yeah Yeah, totally and Mm -hmm. i love that you said that because yeah i'm hoping that people see this as something i mean they hear it and they they use it to get through whatever their whatever darkness is and whatever thing that they're trying to get through and yeah i think a lot of the coma songs represent just trying to get through um processing anything that's too big Absolutely. You know, yeah. Yeah. too too hard to like fathom and get through. Uh-huh. That's what fucking music does. Right. Well, yeah. it's interesting that because you did actually go through that experience of being in a coma, but normally you don't say, 
when an artist you hear a lyric and you say that must have literally happened i mean it's very like we <laughs> right, have to right, know right. the fact we have to know you and know your story to know that's true mm-hmm. yeah it totally really, it totally completely works on another level yeah totally and that's what fucking art and music right. does hopefully right, right? right and that's why like i was in high school listening to fucking ani and who are elliot smith being yeah. so depressed elliot smith didn't really make it through his hard times but yeah. you know like it's so i'm so i just hope that people really hear that and can use it to get through their their unfathomable pain so then what what's next is that i'm trying to you know just getting my stuff together and trying to um open for for awesome bigger bands and acts that that want to bring me on the road that's that's number one Uh we can talk about that later okay let's do that but um i i'm playing a bunch of shows in the city i play college i saw that yeah i'm playing um at come on everybody with um couple of really cool artists i that love are that opening. venue i know you guys should totally it's come. fun yeah um, and um yeah it's a great venue that's where we shot till the crying fades really yeah cool really made it huh. look it's really big everybody. yeah it did it's in bed style yeah so i'm playing a really cute little queer living room show tomorrow night but then um and then you know um I, i'm have you know i'm just trying to push the album and like yeah. get it out there and like, yeah. let people know about it but um, I'm getting nice messages from like all over the world, and then I like see, you know, I don't, I don't make a lot of money on see on like iTunes, but like then I see who's, you know, I, I get my checks, and yeah. I see people from like all over the world listening to my shit, and I'm yep. like, it's like if I, you know, it just gives you like faith that that I I should be doing this, and I do feel like this is my calling, and it's amazing, and um, I play a lot of I play for a lot of queer groups at colleges, uh-huh. and that's awesome because you know I can like pay the rent, and also like do direct activism with them at no cost to them yeah and totally. i get to so i kind of just like base tours around my college shows throughout the year and you know um so you don't get scared off of colleges after your experience i actually thanks for reminding me i do need wear, to like, buy a my own mask and- <laughs> <laughs> hey kids <Yeah. laughs> it's julia walden here i'm terrified of your germs <laughs> um just don't share any bowls with them. You'll be fine. Yeah, right. <laughs> that's where the real germs are in college. <laughs> Mike's are pretty and bronchitis gross. for four years. Don't touch any lava lamps. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Actual thing that happened to me at a college show. This girl was like, "Um, you can come see my lava lamp." I was like, "No, no, no, I'm not going to do that." <laughs> Some nope. funny pickup like pick line. line? <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. She was like, "We're like making what drinks." What decade? I was gonna <laughs> say, <laughs> are lava lamps still a thing? Yeah, I sorry, I, don't I know had one when I was a teenager. I was like, "What the fuck?" What? No, I don't think so. Yeah. Anyway. Who knows what's the mood setter in, in a college dorm now? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm hoping to go. Hold on, wait a second. I have to take a shot. Oh, my goodness. No, we went so long. <laughs> We're out of car space. No. It's a beautiful I talk too much. You I'm didn't sorry. know. It was great. Right? Yeah. You guys no, are awesome. Thanks for dealing with my, awesome. my non linear l- rambling. No, it was awesome. This is how we used to do it, and it's so fun. I love it. Oh, yeah, what do you mean? You used to, you're we like, used to mm-hmm. not be on as tight of a schedule and we could sort of we stretch got out some oh man i must be so interesting that you guys no just i hope resist. that you're just like look super long episode of julia weldon Aww. i'm not cutting it down no oh. i'm sorry I'm, i ramble we we're having a ball exactly your t-shirts <gasps> oh those Woo! are cool it's yeah, gonna look cool. so good under my new cardi <laughs> i got smalls and mediums for you guys under my new cardi <laughs> rolling yeah I'm good. and we're back oh and we're back. Uh, <laughs> um, speaking of Cardi's and cardigans, Cardi B is number one. She on did it. The Hot 100 today. Wow. Mm-hmm. Awesome. She's the first female rapper. Oh, fuck yeah. She has that song Bodak Yellow. Money oh, Moves. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, an Instagram yeah, 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 star yeah. turned. Well, I don't know. She's a lot of things. She's a lot turned of things. rapper. But first female rapper without anyone else on the track to be number one since Lauren Hill. 1998. Woo! Do up that thing. Awesome. Yeah. Holy wow. crap. That's a huge fucking deal. Yes. Yeah. So that's I amazing. also listen to the radio. I must know this song. I listen. I love pop, um, yeah, pop, yeah. bad pop and good pop. But like, I love radio songs. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Anyway, well, that's great. That's, that yeah. that's <laughs> fucking amazing. Also, Lauren Hill. Mm, also, I know. high school. Yes. High school love. I then that's my favorite album of the 90s. Yeah. Maybe ever, actually. Okay. Yeah, totally. That was like late high school for what me. Was it, also, yeah. I could not believe I forgot that Sophie B. Hawkins, I listened to that one too, saying, She's not here. Damn, I wish I yes. was your lover. And I remember it. I forgot to tell you guys. 
I remember that from 90210. I don't know who you guys both remember. <laughs> I talked to her about that. Yeah, I remember yeah. hearing it and being like, well, I, I mean, that's why I'm saying something. I wanted to re- remember to tell you guys because I, it, it was, it's so weird. It's like ingrained in my brain too. Yes. Like I remember being, but like you couldn't back then be like, what is this song? Nope. Right. It just stored itself away. In an emotional so that 20 weird... years later, it could yeah. come back. Totally. I know. How, like, how did we watch TV? Face. Well, music feeding, like popular music feeding into TV wasn't as much of a thing. Is that true? No, that can't be true. Uh, no, it was no, it was, it was a total thing. It's just yeah. new music didn't hit because we couldn't Google yeah, you it, couldn't, so you couldn't like become yeah. famous from TV. Right. Agree. Maybe. I think I agree with that. Yeah, for That's sure. Right. Yes. And now, if you watch You're the nine hundred two one zero podcast expert, I know nothing. If you go back and watch those episodes on Hulu, that song will not be in it. What? They couldn't similar. get clearance. Okay, similar, similar to, to the Dawson's Creek theme song by Paula Cole. Yeah. Wait, which really? is not in they Dawson's couldn't Creek pay until the final it. episode where they sprung for the money they sprung for it for the season series finale this is why i fear for wait, our children's so when future you, it, you they don't they won't pay it's not the licensing fee right like so did you talk to paula and sophie b hawkins about yeah. that yeah well or dara told it? paula who didn't know which yeah. was a fun moment yeah. to experience Ooh, was, so she like was, was she like that one was she like oh she's yeah like, she's what? basically like oh whatever <laughs> Wow, that's interesting. They didn't yeah. want to sp- splurge for, I mean, because it's probably a lot of, it's also residuals and, you know. Yeah. Absolutely. And it's also the heart of the show. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Counterpoint. <It's also> the- <laughs> but the people NBA. for whom that means yeah. anything are not going to watch it on Netflix. Or maybe they will with their kids or their yeah. niece. That's what I'm saying. When what you go back to watch the those song, nostalgia then? shows. I know. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway. So I'm glad that you guys liked the album yes ha- it's beautiful it. um I everybody i keep forgetting people are gonna listen and watch this because i'm so in this moment with you guys but yes <laughs> everyone go listen to this album it's gorgeous and come to enjoy us yeah and all the albums before it and all the albums to come thank you so much for having me this was so amazing this is a blast thanks for coming on and i should tease to you and to our listeners that tegan and sarah did soul sisters last week and that episode is coming Wait, so what? stay tuned which i wasn't there iTunes. for and i'm so excited that's so exciting yeah i, I caught them at, at the meadows Festival. we haven't even talked about this out. i know Woo! anyway it's a good one so yay that's um, amazing full yeah. circle so yeah you guys got excited. some good people we'll have julie I mean, weldon and tegan and sarah in the same month on soul sisters boom we're yay. good we can quit now okay yeah peace out drop mic mic drop mic.